Nicaragua has approved Russian forces to train within their borders and conduct military drills with the Nicaraguan army. Hmm. Katie McFarland joins us, uh, us this morning. And Katie, this is right after we impose fresh, uh, fresh sanctions on officials from Nicaragua. What do you make of this? What, what, what kind of development is this in your mind? Well, I think it says a lot more about Nicaragua and South America than it does about Russia. Mm. You know, Russian forces training in Nicaragua. Well, Russia's got its hands full right now in Ukraine. But what does this indicate? It indicates that there's a country in South America that's willing to let foreign countries come and train there. What about China? What about Iran? What about other countries that could present a real threat to the United States? I mean, if you if Nicaragua says okay to the Russians. Presumably, they're going to say okay to the Chinese. You know, we, we in the United States, from the early days of the Republic, we had something known as the Monroe Doctrine. And that was that the United States insisted that no foreign, particularly then European, countries could come and have a military presence in South America, in the Americas. That's what the Cuban Missile Crisis was all about, preventing Soviet right. Union nuclear weapons to come to Cuba. But guess what? A decade ago, John Kerry, then Secretary of State, now climate czar, he <laughs> said, well, that Monroe Doctrine, that's, that's, that no longer applies. Well, nobody in America paid a lot of attention to it. Nobody in probably South America paid a lot of attention to it. But guess who did? The Russians, the Chinese, and others. That's right. my worry. It's not Russia. It's what comes after Russia. All right. Well, let's get back to Ukraine. Its top negotiator is calling on the U.S. and NATO to send more weapons. I guess that's the question. Are we giving enough weapons to Ukraine? Well, we're promising, as are the Europeans, we're promising weapons, but they're slow to kind of make it out of our, our inventory into the Ukrainian inventory. It's not just us. It's the Germans. It's the French. Here's the thing I worry about with Ukraine. You know, I don't know that Ukraine can win the war. But Ukraine could win the peace, and here's how they would do it. The longer this goes on, the more Russia takes a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. Russia can fight indefinitely. Why? Because oil prices are high, grain prices are high. Russia's greatest exports are oil and grain. So it's rich. Russia can continue to fund this war. And Putin is counting on the fact that, you, that the Western powers are just going to lose interest in Ukraine and stop supplying Ukraine and kind of look the other way. So my worry is that if Ukraine continues to try to fight without the support of the West, it will be very difficult for Ukraine to survive. Yeah, I agree. Uh, one more for you, KT. China just launched their third aircraft carrier. I saw that picture. I think there was some video. I mean, they're just strengthening their naval, uh, you know, uh, hardware, are they not? What do you make of it? Well, China's been on a big military buildup in the last decade, and they're particularly focused on mm. their navy. Why? Well, part of it is to protect Chinese trade around the world, but another part of it is they're looking over at Taiwan, across the Taiwan Straits, and say, if we are going to achieve our goal of bringing Taiwan back under Chinese control, they need to have a strong military in case they want to do it militarily. I don't think they will. I think they'll use other economic means, but they do want a strong military to do it. So this is not something we should be overly concerned about. This is something we knew that was going on, right? Well, we should be, no, we knew it was going on. We should be concerned about it. And our response should be to increase American military presence in the South, in the South China right. Seas and in Asia. China's goal is not only to grab Taiwan, but to push the United States out of the world's most important maritime trade route, the South China Sea, ultimately mm. to push the United States all the way back to Hawaii. So you bet we should be concerned nice. about it and we should do something about it. And that's increase American military strength in the region. All right. Maybe not under this administration, but we shall see. KT McFarlane, no. terrific stuff as always. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much, KT. Good to see you.